Now, when Al Schmidt recorded the group total for the hit Grammy Award winning record, Total 4 at Sunset Sound, he noted the setup of all the instruments. Things a bit different today, folks. So welcome to the Rhythm Studio. Yes, I have myself a gimbal, and you can see Al in the background. You need to stay tuned to the very end because I am going to share some significant information with regards to what we've been um, talking about. I'm on the lab again today, folks, so bear with me. So it's been an interesting week, as you can see. Let me um, adjust this a bit. I'm doing things vlog style today. Why vlog style? Because there's no need in me really putting together something produced. I wanted something a little bit more on the raw side and unproduced. So you all can see the process as it starts. You're going to hear papers rattling. You're going to hear me maybe not sounding that great on this lab, but nevertheless, you're going to get a lot of education with regards to this. That you know I purchased last week. This is the Orion 32 plus Gen 3. Let's take a look at this little butte and you can see everything here here are the specs take a quick look at that it's very important that you guys look at specs okay and here so this is the Orion I'm gonna start at the beginning what is the Orion 32 Plus Gen 3? It's a multi-channel interface that has 32 ins and 32 outs. Of course, you guys already know that. I have been, well, you were probably at the unboxing, but I've been talking about replacing for the longest my um, Pro Tools system and updating. I realized that I... I haven't upgraded in quite some time. So it was time for an upgrade. And out of all of the interfaces that I was interested in, the Orion had just about everything I needed and it would correctly interface with my system. So you guys know the backstory. You saw the unboxing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what are all these props here? And um, why is Al sitting in the background and why is the TC electronic set up in as well as the focus right? Okay, you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is going on here? Well, I'm gonna tell you what's going on. Um, before I install any equipment, I do thorough testing of it. It makes absolutely no sense to install something and then turn around and then it's not working properly once you've installed it okay so with that in mind the orion is a 32 in 32 out multi-channel interface that has all of the necessary connectivity for both a usb as well as thunderbolt studio uh who is this for this particular interface is more likely for a permanent install. You guys see it in a flight case. Um, I initially was going to install it. I mean, rather use it rather in a mobile situation. And I have come to the conclusion that that is an, an impossibility. So it's pretty much for permanent install. You definitely don't want to, you know, have to lug around a total of eight <laughs> D-subs in a live situation. So it's going to be permanently installed. So like I said, you have to be prepared to 
by a mound of these, which you see are D-subs, and there's quite a bit. It's a total, well, I'm doing 16 channels to start out, okay? 16 channels to start out, 16 in and 16 out. Um, you can use sample rates up to 192K. You see it's currently at 48. And I've been doing quite a bit of testing this week, um, including today. So most of you guys want to know probably what was the software installed like. I'm going to show that to you right now. This is the Matrix. No, I don't mean the Matrix, the movie. But I want to jump to, before we get there, I want to go to um, another screen, which was the installation of the software. Now, there's a concern amongst many that there was a, a, a problem with the install of the um, drivers. Now, um, initially, I didn't... I did, well, initially I did have a problem, but the problem was a fault of my own because this particular box right here was not checked. And you see when I roll over it, it checks. What the unit has to do, it has to handshake with your computer in order to verify, I guess, the device number as well as start the control panel, which you just saw. So in order to start the matrix, the software, rather, has to be installed. So let me jump back to the software. All right, so what was that like? Um, again, it was a fault of my own. I didn't have that box checked, and the unit would not handshake properly with my computer initially. Now, here's a caveat. When you are downloading, and when you are trying to get the drivers installed, you must make sure that your USB connection is not interrupted for any reason at all. I did, and what it did, it corrupted the communication between the unit and my computer to the point where it had the screen called bootloader over here on the where you see 48k it said bootloader and i could not for the life of me understand why i could not get back to here as it turns out you can see again right here that little box was not <laughs> checked and because it wasn't checked it would not handshake and because it couldn't handshake to install the drivers once i figured it out I checked the box, the two communicated, and the install went seamlessly from that point forward. So, word to the wise, make sure that your USB connection or Thunderbolt connection is not, you could, you probably just saw it just a minute ago, it says devices, it's lighting up and coming back. Make sure that it is the communication between both your computer as well as the unit is not interrupted at all or it will become a nightmare scenario for you and therefore it will probably create more of a headache installing the drivers but by and large that went seamlessly after i figured out it was my pilot error okay so not to worry there is no worries whatsoever with regards to installing the drivers make sure though that the operating system that you are on, okay, is compatible with the driver. Just do your due diligence in the beginning, in the beginning, and make sure that you have the correct operating system. Do not go out and buy a new Mac um, laptop with this um, Sir or with the Big Sur um, operating system. It may not be compatible, and that's just general. Um, information for all of you in terms of whenever you get any type of new um, system that you're installing, 
where you need to have a dedicated um, computer connection, make sure that you use just one computer. Do not use the, the internet or anything. Okay. So let's jump back. Okay, let's, and I need you guys really to pay attention, please. This is very, 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 very important information right here I'm about to show you. So let's jump back to the Orion Matrix. That was a sidebar, I digress. We are now at the Matrix. Okay, I know when you look at this, it appears daunting. I'm gonna make it real easy for you, really quickly. It's not that difficult. If you look to the right, it says right here, signal. That's just straight up common sense, signal. Something you're sending, okay, to somewhere. That's why it says from, and of course to. Sending something from, it is going to somewhere. Now, a lot of what you see here is just straight up flexibility. That's all that this is. No need to get alarmed, no need to get afraid. Three things you need to recognize. Thing number one, USB play. That is the audio coming out of your computer, going into the interface to be played over your loudspeakers. I'm gonna say that again. USB play is just the USB in the computer coming out, going right here to the Orion to be played back over loudspeakers. That's all that is, okay? But that USB play, which, which is color-coded purple, needs to go from and to somewhere. Where's it going? I have it going to the dedicated purple and purple. The dedicated monitor output on the unit. It has a dedicated left and right monitor out, which means all 24 channels that you see up here, all 24 on the USB will wind up here in the monitor out. Now, because I have a dedicated metering system as well, I needed to use a second location to feed the actual mix, the 24 channels. I'm, it's only 24 because you only allow 24 over USB. If it were Thunderbolt, you get a total of um, 32 in and out. But in this case, you're only allowed uh, 24 over USB because of the speed of USB. But with that in mind, now, I needed to get all 24 of these channels out into my monitor. You see right here? That's my speakers. That's all that that is. No harm, no foul, okay? Also, I needed to get it to the metering. So I had to just click and drag all of these channels and drop them here. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Drag and drop from somewhere to somewhere else. So I want all 24 of these channels being played back to be played out over SPDIF. The SPDIF is also my metering, okay? So when you see the Clarity M, now I don't have to use a dedicated outboard uh, converter to send ADAT optical out. Now the 24, let me get back here again, the 24 USB play outputs are going directly, rather the, the computer out is being fed to the SPDIF out, which is going out and into my Clarity M. Okay, again, inputs and outputs, that's all that these are. The most important two that you need to note right now are just USB play, which is the channels coming out of your computer, being played, and going out your monitoring, okay? So that takes care of the matrix in its most simplest form. Computer output in the USB play into your monitors. Now, as there, there are plenty of other tutorials currently on YouTube, 
by some fantastic people that cover how to get the biggest bang for your buck out of this thing, which can be extremely flexible. Okay, so I would advise that you guys take the time and if you can, learn this thing. Because when I tell you the flexibility is crazy and endless, the things that you could probably do with this in terms of routing are limitless. So this was just straight up genius on their part, as far as I'm concerned. For all intents and purposes, we're not gonna get into right now. There's a mixer. There's also an effects, which you can use, of course, 16 channels, some channels of effects. Like if you wanted to use the AFX effects that they have in, you could use that. And then there's trim controls. When I tell you that this thing puts out an insane amount of gain, you're gonna have to make some modifications to your monitoring because the total output is 24 dB at the top, okay? So you might have to trim your monitors to agree with the overall volume you'll be experiencing. But to jump back to the routing section, you see it says routing. That's all that this is. Concern yourself initially if you get this system with USB play and copy the same purple for purple monitor. How does that relate to Pro Tools? I made it a thousand times easy on myself, okay? And um, let me just jump to that tab real quick. Now, this is what I did. This is Pro Tools 2020. Yeah, y'all, I done broke down and, and bought a subscription. And I, and I think, as it stands, I'm going to have to wind up buying Pro Tools, you know, the, the um, perpetual for $700. We'll talk about that later. But you all already know how I feel about that situation. But in any event, let's jump up to the I.O., Okay, boom, bam. All right, word to the wise, okay? Let's just be smart, period. It's best that you set your I.O. To, up to reflect exactly what's currently in your studio, okay? Now, if you look carefully, that's just going to sim simplify things for you come re recording time. It makes no sense to install this thing and then after the fact, you decide, oh, I need to update the I.O. Do it from the outset. If you look carefully, you'll see I set up a total of currently 12 channels, which are reflecting 12 of um, my best pre's that I have. I have a total of about 18. You may, if you have a dedicated more me system like I do, that would be either the unit by Behringer, an Aviom, a Here Technologies, or in my case, my aging Furman system, which is audio over um, Cat5. Um, it still works. It's a six channel system. It is best to set your headphone um, cue system up now. Okay, first let me go through the setup. Of course, my mains on the output. Furman is feeding um, outputs three and four. That's Furman indi individual channel one is three, channel three on the, of course, on the Orion you see up here. Okay, analog. So it's gonna be in three, four, five, and six are Furman's individual channels. That's this unit right here individual channels one, two, three, and four, along with a stereo cue where it says monitor, an effect stereo, that's right here. Okay, so let's jump back. Let me do that. Let me just adjust this really quick. You see? So now I've taken care of every channel. So the stereo cue, which is going to be the mix that will contain either the, the effects uh, re return into the headset or a different mix other than what I'm hearing in the control room, more of a perform performance mix, 
Okay, that's coming out, outputs seven and eight. That will feed the Furman, okay, which is an analog unit. So let me close this out really quick. So word to the wise, get both your, your, your Pro Tools rig set up to reflect exactly what's happening here in the beginning. Let me jump back here. That's going to save you. Now you can get fancy and name these exactly like the pro I, I chose not to because, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is just a digital patch bay. Now here's some of the um, notes that I was taking and you'll see what I had here. Clear, no color. The mid range and the lows, you can hear nuances. The resonances, they show up. Now, what do I mean when I say resonances? There are certain little things that you hear, like I hear here, vocal breaths, you know, things that you're, you're used to hearing when you're in a, you know, certain circumstance and you're listening for it. Um, this was my note, <laughs> permanent install due to D subs. Another plus was that the matrix is great, very flexible, and you can personalize it to fit your studio. Totally configurable. Uh, what's on the back of here? Oh, here's the biggest plus right here. The headroom is great and trimmable from the console app. Well, the, that was the matrix that I showed you guys earlier. Um, here was something that was a really kick. I was listening to Stanley Clark's Lopsy Lou and for, for anyone who has listened to that, um, or if you get a chance to listen to it, Tony Williams is playing drums. And I could hear the resonant head on the top tom humming as he stepped on the kick drum. That's crazy. Also, I could hear when John Robinson did the intro to Rock With You, doom, ba da da boom da ba da 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 boom you could hear the toms humming. It's not uncommon for you to hear the resonant head vibrating on a drum, um, even if it's not being hit. That's normal. So that I thought was telling about the detail in the mids that you hear on this unit. Here's something else. In the beginning of Stevie Wonder's um, send one your love. You can hear the tape hiss from, from the, um, the recorder. I mean, literally hear hiss. And it's not like I'm listening. Oh, let me see if I could pick, pick out the, the, all of the analog nuances and qualities. No, you can hear tape hiss. And I thought I was like bugging out at that point. Now, when Al Schmidt recorded the group total for the hit Grammy award-winning record Total 4 at Sunset Sound. He noted the setup of all the instruments. Now, if you take quick note, he used 287s. Look where the 87s are located in relationship to the drum kit. Okay? These are baffles around the drum kit, okay? It was sealed off and baffled off, okay? There are two 87s in the room. The room dimensions are 21, I mean, rather, I'm sorry, 31 by 24, 31 feet by 24 feet by 15 foot high ceilings, okay? So that just gives you the, an idea of how large this room is that they recorded this Grammy Award winning album. Take a note, guys. Room mics on Jeff Procaro's kit. This is the setup. Okay? All right? And I'm going to tell you why this unit is the bomb diggity. And I really believe in everything that Antelope is doing right now. When Al Schmidt recorded the song Rosanna, which you can see right here, 
by the group Toto. You could hear the room mics on Jeff's drums. That might sound corny. That might, might sound trite to many who, who are listening to me right now. But when I tell you the depth, the depth of your recorded signal when it comes to this particular unit is quite impressive. Now, I'm going to play just the intro of this song. I can't play the whole song because I will be demonetized for it. But for demonstration purposes only, let me play the beginning of Rosanna. Here we go. And I just kept playing that over. I'm going to play it again. Jump back. Here we go. You can hear the roll. Back here is what I'm hearing. When you close your eyes and you're listening to this unit, you can hear the back of the room. And I, I was absolutely sold at that point on the quality of the converters, the clock, the stability of the signal allowed me to actually hear those 87s in conjunction with the rest of the kit. And you could reach out. When I tell you, you could reach out and touch. And I'm not trying to be corny, guys, honestly. I'm not trying to be corny. The depth in the back there, all of this stereo feel, like how you always hear me say left to right, front to back. Well, I could hear those 87s. They are right here, left and right. You could hear the room. Unbelievable. Totally unbelievable. Um, I believe it to be worth every nickel. Um, the conversion is stellar. The interface is beautiful. The depth and the clarity in the mids are perfect. The nuances that you pick up from the unit are great. The matrix is flexible. The, in, uh, the ability to interface well with any DAW is bar none. I'm not saying that others don't. I'm just saying by and large that the flexibility um, and, and the integratability, rather, I should say. And from my perspective, let me use myself as an example. From my perspective and from my usage, it seems like it will interface quite well with my um, current setup. I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to say hello to the family for me.